All right, so continuing the joy.js val input validation series. So we are going to be, so last time we essentially saw um, a, a schema uh, and the idea was, is, you know, I just kind of asked, what are some ways that this schema could be potentially exploited, okay? And in this exercise, basically in this tutorial, we're going to be hyper-focusing on that question and see how that schema is exploitable. And through this process, we are also going to learn about mass assignment vulnerabilities. So in case you're just uh, coming into this tutorial straight from the internet, I'm just going to give, I'm just going to, this is basically the schema. Uh, whoops, excuse me. This is the schema. I'm just going to kind of hopefully quickly scroll through it and you can kind of pause if needed. Okay. And this is the payload that's coming in from the user. Okay, and <clears throat> excuse me, and that uh, this was all validated correctly by Joy, but it is exploitable in a certain way. So, let's kind of start um, how how this uh, basically start into the, uh, the the thought process of how this schema can be bypassed, and we are going to be going through a series of hints uh, to kind of lead us through this journey and hopefully learn something through the hints as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow, <laughs> the throat's acting up today. So anyhow, how can the schema be bypassed? That's kind of hint number one. And just kind of, just kind of think about it. Um, can it be bypassed? And well, I guess I already kind of said it kind of can. But um, if you can figure out the answer to that, uh, how that schema could be bypassed right off the bat, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Uh, but uh, we're just going to keep kind of going through some hints here. Um, anyhow. So the hint really is, is just remember some of the assumptions uh, from the previous tutorial. And basically what we said is that the JSON input with keys and slash values is directly assigned into the keys and values in the database. So they're mapped in. Now think about this. What could this potentially override? Now, it could override some potentially very sensitive fields in the database. So let's think about it this way. Let's say that there is an isAdmin flag that is set on some user model in the, on the server, okay, in the back end. Now, what's if the, the back end logic kind of controls this and it's not expecting some other process to be, to be able to override this? Now, imagine that mass assignment happening and the user is passing an is admin true flag and that is just blindly uh, assigned into the database because the developer is not expecting a user to submit this key right here and, and, and just at all. So these can be some pretty bad um, vulnerabilities. So in a nutshell, this is a type of mass assignment vulnerability. So, okay, so that was one hint. Um, so thinking about how that previous schema could be bypassed, it can just be, just because we, we already said that um, there is a mass assignment vulnerability uh, that that schema and just the developer set it up a certain way. To, well, just they set up their back end in a certain way that since it takes all those keys values, maps it directly into keys values on some uh, on some model object. OK, that there's a mass assignment vulnerability. OK, so we know that now, given that fact, can you go back to the schema and think of any place that uh, that maybe this is admin flag, this this is admin key could be potentially passed in. So that's basically, uh, <laughs> I guess I got a little ahead of myself, but that's essentially what hint number two is. Okay, so so check that out, see what you can find, and also if you want to see the schema directly, uh, as I've said kind of in the last tutorial. You could go to sts.tools uh, forward slash joy schema uh, to see uh, that code all up on GitHub. Okay, so now I'm just going to proceed. So I, the logical idea would be to add is admin true to the root level. 
of the of the payload okay so let's try injecting it there and see what happens what do you think would happen potentially okay given our schema where we are explicitly defining the keys that are whitelisted okay what do you think would happen if we pass in an unexpected uh, key into into the payload well, <laughs> Joy doesn't like that in a good way. And basically, th that, uh, that console.log down here, okay, prints out the validation error is, okay, is admin is not allowed. Okay. Hmm. So now, think about this. Where else could is admin true be inserted? Okay, so go back to that schema and see if you can find out another place. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed. Oh, well, here's the other thing that you can check out is, and this is pretty much kind of a giveaway if you can't, uh, if you can't find it, the insertion point, is uh, if you go into GitHub, check out the, the Joy API docs for the object key schema, and uh, think about how this could potentially confuse a developer, okay? And they might make an erroneous choice on their, on their whitelisting strategy, okay? So here's really the answer. When we look at the roles um, within, oh, excuse me, because <laughs> Docker wants to be updated. <laughs> of course, it's got to happen all uh, at the worst time, <laughs> anyhow. So if you if you look at this, was a part of the schema object, okay? And uh, but look, here's the thing: no keys are whitelisted here. All right, so so. From first glance, this looks like the developer is allowing a, an empty um, object to be um, basically passed in here, okay? Because no keys are whitelisted, okay? So that's the thing. An empty object, it, it appears, would pass validation. But if there were keys in here, okay, that on first glance, looks like it would not pass validation because we are implementing a, we are trying to implement a whitelisting strategy. So think about basically how bad it could be if the backend took this roles um, key and uh, thought that there was, say, like an empty object that was being passed in and maybe it just like leveraged that further down the line. Well, here, let me, let me take, take, take a step back potentially the developer set this up knowing that backend logic does some items um, to populate the roles um, basically key with some sensitive information. So what the developer might have thought was, okay, I'm just going to make sure that this roles doesn't come in with any, pre any predefined values, okay? So this is just kind of just a, a simple assumption uh, just to kind of illustrate more of a larger overarching point. It's not saying that uh, this happens just like this um, all the time. However, um, mass assignment vulnerabilities uh, do exist uh, all, all over the place. And this, as we will see, can be a big gotcha. So now check this out. In this doc that I linked right here, object.keys, okay, so it has the schema. So it says this, if schema is, say, an empty object, okay, no keys are allowed. But if schema is null or undefined, any key is allowed. So <laughs> it's such a gotcha. So if we literally would have put in an empty object right here, um, basically nothing could be passed. But since this is technically null right in here, okay, um, or undefined, any key is allowed, okay? So, so if we think, if we actually go down and we look into the payload and we put roles and we did is admin equals true right here, um, that would actually pass validation, okay? So the validation is null, okay? So, uh, which means that, yeah, everything's fine from Joy's point of view. So, really the takeaways is, and just in any input validation library, you want to be very careful with library defaults, okay? Um, because it's easy for hackers to look for edge cases in validation. For example, I mean, if... If, uh, if a hacker is trying to like query an API and they can see that it is just node, like a node API, 
there is a high probability if it is leveraging input validation, it's probably going to be joy. And knowing these little edge cases, right, um, about these kind of like sub objects uh, within uh, like a JSON payload and how some of those might not be validated appropriately, an attacker can hyper focus on that because they know it's node and it's probably going to be joy and they and they know that that's an edge case within joy so once again uh, really want to be careful with library defaults and please make sure uh, to go over some of uh, the, just the api docs for whatever input validation library you're leveraging so yeah and, and also here are some additional resources that uh, might help. Um, also, just seeing uh, all of the uh, kind of the on GitHub, all of like kind of related projects that are related to Joy is super helpful. And also um, for defining password com complexity requirements within Joy, um, I think that this these two links right here uh, can just be some inspiration. So yeah, all right. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.